Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica and I make videos all about making and selling candles. And in today's video, we are going to be going over all of the things that I wish I would have done as a very new beginner when it comes to candle making. So I started making candles uh, more seriously for business back in September of 2019. It is now March 1st, so it has been a full six months of me working on creating the best candle that I possibly can. So I thought it would be an interesting video for anybody that's trying to figure out exactly where they should start when it comes to making candles and my personal uh, recommendations for what I think that you should do. So starting off with number one, it's really just up to you to decide exactly what kind of candles you want to make. So there are a bunch of different kinds of candles. Um, you can make pillar style candles, you can make container candles. Um, just look up photos of candles um, on Etsy or just you know anywhere online and just try to figure out exactly what a to you and what you think that you would want to recreate. So once you figure out what kind of candles you want, that will determine on the starter kits that you would want to get. So if you're looking for a soy wax, a paraffin wax, a blend of soy and paraffin wax, a coconut wax, um, if you are wanting to have more luxury type of candles, that will determine on the kind of wax you should be looking for. But either way, you want to find waxes that are going to be um, available from actual candles candle suppliers. You don't want to get waxes that are from um, craft stores such as Michaels or Hobby Lobby because that won't give you the best kind of candle possible and the ultimate goal is to create um, a candle that is professional and will be best for the end consumer. I will link some really good starter kits in the description box so you guys can go on and check out and see which starter kits you want to start with. Um, if you know for certain that you only want soy, um, get a couple of starter kits that are soy wax. If you want a pear soy or a coconut wax, um, do, do the same. Um, don't just try out one wax, try out multiple different waxes. That's one thing that I wish I really would have done is try out multiple different waxes. I've only ever tried one wax and it's the wax that I've stuck with. I love it more than anything and to be honest I guess I don't really know any different I don't know any comparisons the only thing that I can compare it to is on the Facebook group of everybody else posting their photos of soy wax and having uh, sinkholes and bumpiness and unevenness and I've never had any issues with that with my wax so I think that that's kind of been a huge reason on why I haven't wanted to try anything else is because I think I have a really nice wax and I don't want to be spending any extra money on something that's unnecessary when I already have really good wax. The second thing I recommend is with fragrance oils. So with us as candle makers, we get really excited about buying as many different one ounce samples as we can. And I know I've referenced this in other videos before, but what I would suggest doing, because we there's no getting around it, you have to order samples and you have to test and be able to see which scents you like the best, which ones have a good cold and hot throw and um, which ones burn really nicely. And okay, what what I would recommend, and I know this is going to be kind of hard for a lot of people who want to try out so many different scents, is pick one kind of scent. So if it's floral, let's say lavender, um, pick a lavender from three or four different suppliers and um, test out which lavender is the best. And then you have you know that that lavender is the best and you don't have to worry about later on if you have a certain scent and you, you know that it's good you like it but you can keep thinking like well is the one from candle science better or maybe the one from the flaming candle might be better and that way you have a little bit more of a wide range of different um, candle suppliers that will have that scent and you can test out which one is your favorite and I would do that in multiple different categories and that way you know for certain that you like that scent and this one is going to be the best one from that scent. I also really wish that I would have gotten more wicks. I really just started this business and this journey creating the startup business with one kind of wax and one kind of wick. And right now, actually, to the right of me, I am testing out wicks and these are HTP wicks and I have ever only used Eco Wicks. So that is something that I am learning and realizing a long time ago that I should have tested. And I was gonna open up my Etsy store and I can't now because I really want to focus on finding the best quality candle that I possibly can. And that can't happen if I've only ever tried one wick, especially since the Eco Wicks absolutely drive me 
up the wall and I kept trying to convince myself that it's fine, you don't have to worry about it because all candles are gonna smoke and soot and it is what it is, you, you know, there's really nothing you can do about it. But from these candles that I'm trying out, these wicks, um, they have very, 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 very minimal um, smoking to them. I've seen it a few times, just a little bit, but the Eco Wicks used to have this huge, like dark smoke flame coming from it. And it would just drive me crazy because I don't want that to happen to the customer and have it be a problem and have it be a dangerous flame. And I'd rather just spend this extra time testing than just selling all the ones that I've made. So all the ones up there on the top were ones that I thought that were going to be the end result. And that was going to be the final product and I could go ahead and uh, sell them if they sold. And I really just, don't feel comfortable with it and I don't want to rush it and I don't want to send out a product that I'm not proud of and that I'm not a hundred percent happy with because I want to start getting a return on all of this investment because I don't want to send out a product like that if um, it's not going to be my best product. So I want to have a very good first impression with everybody that purchases my candles and I want everybody to love them and not have any issues with them. And um, the only way I can do that is by testing and I highly recommend that to all beginners. Please be patient and and that is really kind of the whole um, gist of this channel. And I want to show that instead of just tell that because I have been saying in a couple of my videos, I'm gonna get my Etsy store up by the end of February. I've been telling people end of February, it's gonna be up. And I don't wanna give any more deadlines. I don't wanna give any more dates of when things are going to happen because it's gonna happen when it's gonna happen and when I feel ready and comfortable because I don't want to rush into it and then feel regretful later on that I'm selling something that is not what I feel comfortable selling. I don't wanna sell something that I don't feel comfortable selling, so I would rather do all of this testing right now, and if it takes another month for me to get everything up on Etsy, so be it. Um, just be very, very patient, and be patient with yourself through this process, because it's a lot of things going on in your head. It's a lot of, what do I need? What do I need to do this? How do I ship? How do I, you know, make these candles? How do I make sure that it has a good hot throw? How do I make sure that the candles are safe? What do I need to do legally? There's a lot of different things that go into it and just be patient with yourself. Take everything one step at a time, write everything down. When you're testing, write everything down so you know. When you're um, adding coloring to your candles, put in how many ounces or how many grams of wax you're using per whatever, you know, the dye tips or the liquid dye that you're using. Write that down so that you will be able to recreate that so that everything will be very cohesive and all of the colors will look the same. You will thank yourself so much later for just writing everything down. So speaking of writing everything down, I have this permanently up on my cabinet right here. So when I'm making candles in my kitchen, I can reference this um, whenever I need to. So I have all of the steps that I need to take when it comes to making one, two, or three candles in either size. And then for the wax melts, I have three, six, and nine tarts at a time. And this just helps me being able to reference it whenever I'm making candles and I don't have to continuously look in the notes of my phone. I can just look at the cabinet and it's just up here at all times. So I think that's it for today. I'm just gonna be testing out all of these wicks and, and it looks like all of these wicks are too big because they cannot stop dancing around and um, I do see a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of smoke coming from them. So I'm gonna go through and try to understand all of these numbers when it comes to HTP wicks. So I'm gonna go through and um, retest these and test some more jars and just a lot of testing, a lot of patience. That is just kind of the focus of this video that I'm trying to get across to anybody who's new, that this process takes a long time and don't get upset with yourself. Give yourself time to learn and um, give yourself time to create the best product that you possibly can. I would love for you guys to subscribe to my YouTube channel and subscribe to me on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.